Maya Bina. You know, the first thing we really love to know about is, I know from the point where you started, you know, which was further innovation that you did post, um, you know, I would want to know that barring the doctors who were, of course, able to make use of this information, who were the other beneficiaries of it? Perfect. Uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, like we started off the company commercially like in August 2014 um, um, and uh, I think before this like it was like a research project that we were sort of like doing like um, uh, with like research institutions uh, broad thesis was the fact that like healthcare information uh, just like information is going to open up and it's going to go onto the cloud and people are going to do like a massive scale like innovation on top of it and there is no ubiquitous platform that solves for getting the data opening it up uh, and like ability to sort of like build software applications on top of it. Uh, right. uh, there's no uh, ubiquitous layer that sort of like solves for that. We, that's what we were sort of like trying to build out. Uh, commercially, the company sort of like started off like in August 2014, where uh, we got like a little bit of seed funding from Rajan Anandan and um, uh, capillary founders and a few of uh, uh, like um, uh, so people who sort of like uh, were doing like software in India in general. And um, uh, and at that point, like we started building this as a horizontal software company that would focus on building out uh, uh, tech, tools and technologies for like large enterprises to uh, first get uh, a lot of their data that they've been storing in silos onto a common cloud platform, then have like a layer on top that can they can run large scale analytics on top of it, and then uh, an API layer on which like they can do like more and more software innovation on top of it. Uh, so that, that was sort of uh, the initial thesis. We got Disney, Walter Sluers, NASA, a lot of them as customers initially. And then like when we sort of like saw the state of healthcare and like where healthcare technology was, uh, I think we decided to narrow down our focus and just focus on healthcare as uh, the key problem that we are going to go solve for. And and what, what other elements did you add? Uh, to this, clearly, I mean, you know, one one area if you can talk about is COVID, and particularly how did this entire um, databases and analytics were very useful during this time for the healthcare industry. Uh, yeah, uh, perfect. Uh, so I think um, as we sort of like went into healthcare, like I think the first thing that we were solving was uh, that the patient doctor relationship was generally like very, very transactional. You go to a doctor first time, like you're basically entering your name and like that's the context that they're working on. You can go to a bank, you go to um, like your retailer, which is Amazon, Flipkart, whatever you sort of like go to, they have a lot more context about you because they know basically like uh, their journey with you and all of those um, uh, type of things. So that context for the doctor did not sort of like exist, right? So that was the first problem that we solved. Uh, that bring in all of these data systems um, together so that when you go to the doctor, they understand your medical history. Um, you're not sort of like first time going and writing on a piece of paper that like I had diabetes or like uh, uh, my sugar was sort of like low or uh, like any other conditions that were sort of like there. Uh, so they have like this view. And on top of that, like you provide some level of like clinical decision support. Uh, that if someone's test uh, came and their A1C count was basically like greater than nine, uh, which was three years back, which means that they are at high risk of diabetes. Uh, how yeah. do you put that uh, information in front of the doctor so that they can really at the point of care know that uh, these are like the conditions that they are sort of like suffering for. And these are like the high risk items that you can sort of like uh, look at. So that was the first problem that we solved. And then on top of it, we like uh, built out like various engagement mechanisms uh, that if the doctor has gotten to know some of these things, they can click a button and send uh, some material out to you, right? Like a text. Um, uh, or like an email that, hey, like uh, these are things that you should be doing for your diet. This is how you should be uh, thinking about like uh, uh, staying healthy and like all of those uh, type of things. So the relationship suddenly from this transactional relationship uh, where you just went to the doctor and uh, at one go, you are sort of like just um, um, like they treat you for when you're sick. It just became a relationship where they are responsible for keeping you healthy over a period of time. Uh, right. right? Uh, um, so the big shift that we are trying to drive like through the technology is in some way like reactive care to preventative care. Right? Preventive uh, care, yeah. That's what I was going to come to. So it's it's sort of uh, solves the problem of preventive health care, which, uh, which is otherwise hard to adjust. Right. So tell me, are you currently only uh, doing this for USA or are you doing it in other markets also? 
So I think like the first uh, four or five years, we've just been focused on uh, US. Like it's a very, very large uh, market. It's also fairly fragmented um, uh, per se. So I think like the first four or five years, uh, we've been very, very focused on like the US uh, uh, markets per se. This year, I think like we've start, uh, started like expanding like internationally a little bit as well, like uh, UK and UAE sort of like um, uh, EMEA in some ways basically is becoming like the second market that we are approaching. Most markets that we are approaching have some sort of digitalization of healthcare already, right? Like, so they use like the electronic health record uh, um, and um, and on top of it, you can then create like the system of intelligence on top of it as well, right? So, uh, so I think uh, uh, those are, that's the natural course of evolution of the company. But even today, basically like 95% of our revenue comes from the US. And what other markets are you looking to enter into? Um, I think for this year, it's probably going to be UK and UAE only, um, uh, but okay. um, like over the course of um, the next few years, I think most markets which have like some bit of like electronic health record uh, applicability uh, are markets that we are interested in. Healthcare companies not come up, uh, come out as investors um, in Innovasive, or did you not reach out to them? I think um, when we started, we wanted to have like tech investors invest because we were we are building a technology company that's focused on healthcare rather than like a healthcare company that's doing technology, right? Like, uh, but, so, so I mean, but likewise, all healthcare companies also need technology. Uh, yeah. So so I think like um, so we wanted to have like um, investors who've seen like tech company scale, uh, right? Sure. Like so people from Rajan uh, and then like uh, going on to like Westbridge and Lightspeed and then Tiger and uh, Dragonair, all of these are like market tech investors. They've seen like the life cycle of how tech companies evolve, what are like the growth metrics, how can you sort of like uh, uh, really build out like institutional scale, like uh, in a technology business, how do you expand globally, like all of these things that are very, very helpful for us to get a perspective from in, uh, investors like these, um, uh, right? So that that's the investment said that we've been like focused on uh, very primarily like tech uh, heavy investor base who invested in companies like Twilio and Dropbox and Box and uh, um, Snowflake and all of these like companies that have sort of like broken through. What all needs to be fixed in the healthcare industry so that you know we don't lose lives and uh, I mean you know you're quite right a reactive healthcare is still um, the easier part you can find out through imaging and everything you can find find out the disease and cure it but really it's the preventive healthcare which is the most important part of it and reacting to a virus even before it starts spreading that's that's what is required so what how do you think the healthcare industry is going towards that not just innovation but the entire healthcare industry yeah like and like i think like we talk about like this concept of singularity quite often like um, in like our uh, communication in general but like as you sort of like see uh, today like uh, things like fitbit and other sensors are starting to basically come where you can like have like some bit of like monitoring of health uh, done like at a remote, remote location your heartbeats basically like uh, uh, increases your blood pressure increases your uh, like a lot of these things are now getting measured through devices that are connected to the internet uh, so uh, suddenly we are going to see like a massive boom in like uh, uh, data that's been collected on you that can be used to now drive like medical insights uh, per se. Okay. None of the health um, providers are basically like ready for things of this nature, right? Like because the doctor does not see you like this uh, uh, today. So there is like this aspect of change that's going to happen like over the next five to seven years that there is one healthcare delivery like model which is very based based on the fact that you go to the doctor and then they check what's your heartbeat and like uh, they sort of like make deductions um, uh, uh, based on that. And then there is this parallel stream that's like emerging, which is like, how do you sort of like uh, monitor more and more of the body and really get signals out of the body um, uh, per se. So how do you sort of like now merge these two worlds together? Because you still want the doctor to be making the eventual um, uh, decision on things, right? You don't want like an algorithm to be deciding whether you are sick or not. Uh, you still want like a doctor's involvement um, in those uh, decisions. What are the medications that you are going to be on? How do you sort of like um, uh, like get treated for a particular thing? There is like a bringing of these two worlds together and data is basically key right? because data is basically like coming in from one um, source and the at the other receiving end, like people are not 
having tools and technologies to sort of like utilize that and help them sort of like make like more clinical decisions based on top of it. So I think bringing these two worlds together over the next five to seven years, I think what we think of healthcare today is going to change like on its head. Uh, um, like uh, the doctor is like for very, very critical decisions, but we are getting monitored like a lot more regularly and therefore like uh, uh, catching chronic diseases even before they sort of like happen uh, is basically yeah. going to come in the realm of possibility in some way or form. And that's what I think like uh, needs to happen and more and more uh, quickly as, as much as we can. Sure. So, I mean, uh, so just to simplify what you're saying, I mean, so uh, looking at the data points of a patient, could the doc would the doctor be able to tell that, you know, three years hence, he's more prone to have a cancer or, um, you know, he's uh, sitting on a diabetes um, hot seat or whatever. So uh, is, is that going to be possible because of yeah. technology in healthcare? Yeah, no, I'll give you examples, right? So it's already starting to happen like with some of uh, like our cases where like we are uh, seeing um, regular course of like the patient's information and their weight is increasing like over uh, a period of time. Like, uh, and it's consistently getting to a point where uh, like you don't need to go to a doctor for them to basically be able to analyze this. Like, but if your weight is like increasing like uh, fairly like consistently and if you're like, uh, and you did a cholesterol test like somewhere where like it sort of like came that your uh, overall sort of like uh, chances of a heart failure basically have reached like a critical threshold uh, at that point today what happens is that unless you go to the doctor there is nothing that would happen uh, right like you will continue on that path and you really go to the doctor at the point where like uh, things have already like escalated and it's not like in, under control but in this case there is an alert that comes up like on the doctor's window and they send you basically like a notification hey come see see me uh, because like your um, uh, things are basically off the chart and we've seen that like uh, this year uh, like medicare and medicaid like uh, because of these type of interventions that we are able to drive through data, their quality of care and uh, outcomes increased by 8% with like all of our customers. They measure like 16 different like chronic conditions and on uh, like on top of it, like outcomes improved by 8%. It's just like intervention of data preemptively rather than like when they were like really sick. Uh, per se. So, so I think we are seeing a lot of that trend sort of like happen. And actually, if you do this, the overall cost of care also goes down uh, because you're not like treating the patient like in a very expensive like surgery, but like uh, telling them that, hey, like just change your diet plan and do like a few of these things. Uh, and I think like uh, health outcomes would sort of like change dramatically like uh, um, for you. So I think we're seeing like a lot of that. We, we, so like, I think like with our customers cost come down by a billion dollars last year, uh, uh, right? Like, um, and um, like health outcomes improved by 8%. So like America spends $4 trillion on healthcare today, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. which is larger than like in, in some way, like a Indian, country. <laughs> right? Like, uh, and so uh, like the typical answer to everything is spend more. Uh, uh, right yeah. but that's not true in this case like if you have like smart technological interventions you can use the same amount of money being spent and people will be far more healthier sure so well, before you decided to sort of start innovative or was it something that you were always passionate about and you went forward with it yeah so i think like i went to kharagpur like as my undergrad like we started off something called the kharagpur consulting group there from like uh, kanav and i basically like started that up like so i think the entrepreneurial bug was almost always there like we wanted to basically do something and then my first job was with this with this company called ingasol rand which is like a fin like they gave me this role for creating for india by india strategy um, right like uh, um, and i was the chief of staff to like the person who was like the chief strategy officer for india and uh, right out of undergrad, right. I was working between China, China, India, US to basically bring technologies from all of these different places and build stuff for India. And like when I joined, it was like an idea on paper. And like uh, three years that I sort of like worked on it, like it became like a 40, 50 million dollar revenue business. Uh, uh, and it was like someone who is 23, 21, sure. 22 years old, it was 
incredible to see that like you can think of something like on a piece of paper and suddenly it could become products and um, uh, thousands of people sort of like using those products and how the how does that journey sort of like look like? Uh, and it was like an incredible learning experience. Like, like Ingersoll Rand India's like CEO was like one of our seed, seed investors, right? Like Venkatesh Valluri. Like, so, so I think we wanted to do something. Um, uh, Sandy and I were sort of like uh, working together like at Ingersoll Rand. Uh, uh, and so all three of us sort of like wanted to do something uh, even before like um, uh, we started Innovator. And then this uh, professor reached out and said that we want to do this for Harvard and Wharton. Bring all of that data together. This is an area that we we had worked uh, on like before, uh, and that was just like the right opportunity, right time, uh, sort of like coming together.